Hey y'all, Jeremy with Archery Shack. I got a Hoyt Vector 32. Still has the original Hoyt strings on it, so I wonder it hadn't exploded. Guy dropped off. We're gonna put some pink and purple custom Archery Shack strings on here. He left an arrow with us. We're gonna tune it up, get everything looking good, and uh, y'all can follow us with the journey. So stay with us. So we got over here to the bow press. Excuse our mess. We're in the beginning stages of the busy season for this year and uh, just trying to get a couple bows on film for y'all as we can. I'm just going to take off all these strings and cables. If you were to be doing this at home, don't. if you need to take one off at a time, that's fine. Just to remember how they go back. But we're going to snatch them off and start fresh we've already got our new uh strings and cables built out of bcy x99 material uh, we really like that we've stretched them to 400 pounds actually left them overnight on the air stretchers and uh let them recover for a little while and then we checked them on our 100 pound pneumatic cylinder I took a quick clip of it that I'll throw in here. All right, so we got our strings off. I'm gonna get the brand new ones. I'm gonna start with a bus cable. These Hoyts are usually pretty easy to tune. So I'm gonna get that going. I'm gonna feed it up through here. On most any bow that has a bus cable and a control cable, the bus cable, which is what carries most of the load, is gonna be closest to the arrow so that it puts the least amount of torque into the limbs if that makes any sense because it's got the most it's what's actually pulling the limbs together the bus cable the control cable is almost a continuation of the limbs of the limbs of the uh, string itself think about a single cam bow and uh, this is sort of the back side of a single cam string is the way I think about it there's not much tension on this Oh, we popped off. There's not much tension on the control cable or the string at full draw at all. I mean, hardly any tension. We'll feed this through here. Okay. There's our two cables. The bus cable, in case some... T I, I don't... I say stuff, and then when I rewatch it, I think, well, maybe they didn't know what I was talking about. The bus cable is on a on a binary, uh, excuse me, on a hybrid cam bow. It's the one that splits at the top, and it hooks on the bottom at the cam below. The control cable don't split, and it just hooks on the cam on each end. And then, of course, just the string itself is what your arrow actually hooks to. which we are putting on now. Very important to not twist or untwist these as you're installing. There may be a little bit of twisting I need to do uh, on two things before we get done, but it's gonna be very minor. And that'll be the bus cable will get a little bit of twist if I need to uh, time the bow. And we'll get into that in a minute. This yoke may get a little twist for me to get this cam aimed just right. We'll go over that in a minute. And then the string, once we get the peep tied in, if the peep's a little crooked, then we'll put a twist in the string here or there. But nothing major to adjust, you know. People just let them sit there on the counter and untwist, and man, it just tears my nerves up. I'm gonna go ahead and take his old peep out. and put it in this string. Okay. We got our little string here to tell us where to put it. Uh, if you get a string shipped to you, It'll have this in it and you can just pull it and it'll be the dead center of the string and that's where you put the peep side at. Um, I've already measured these, so when I, 
I'm gonna loop it after this and we'll go to the draw board and then uh, if we have to make a slight adjustment we will we probably will on the cable on the bus cable we'll check the axle to axle length the brace height the poundage get all that perfect and then uh, we'll start tuning it so we're gonna stick this peep in and meet you over at the bow vise all right, we're over here at the vise. We're, today we're using our Baker uh, archery vise. If you need a vise and you want one that'll do anything, look up Baker archery products. This thing's great. You can move it all around, up and down. I mean, I can move this thing. What I like about it is when I get to the peep portion, I can let it down and get the peep right here in front of me. But then I can level it up just like normal. It's not putting any compression on the limbs while I'm tuning it, so it's pretty cool. So let's start working on this thing. I'm gonna clip on a couple levels. If you're doing this at home and just trying to watch some stuff, you can actually go to like Walmart and get a picture level and just set it on the bow riser. But I'm gonna get this thing level. They left an arrow with us, thank God. People are bad about um, dropping bows off and not leaving an air. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just take this off real quick. Get our arrow in there. So I'm gonna take his old string, whatever I did with it. I've lost it. My guy. Is this it? That's it, I got it. <laughs> Have no fear. I know y'all were worried. I'm going to line up his old loop and his new loop. I almost got it right already. I'm going to put his peep right back where it was at. Go ahead and tie it in. That'll be done with. So some people tie these in a lot of different ways. <clears throat> at a minimum, bare minimum, you need to tie around the peep side. It's a very rare thing, but we have had these come flying out before. You do not want a projectile coming at your head. So I'm going to tie that in. And some people just leave it at that. I don't like it because with all the, if you ever watch a slow motion video, these strings do all kind of wild stuff as they decelerate. So let's get this burnt. Okay. Now we're going to tie above and below it. And there is 2,572 different ways to do this. But I'm going to show you the easiest take your serving, divide it in half, put it on the string, behind the string, and just keep pulling it through. I'm going to pull it through, pull it down. Make another loop, pull it down. I use several different methods of tying in a peep, but this method, I know if I need to move the peep maybe an eighth of an inch, I can do it with my fingernails because this will slide if you really, 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 really push on it. If it's a tournament shooter that I know never is going to move his peep, I do something a little bit different. But this is, we do a lot of this. Particularly on hunting bows that people like to move stuff on. So then I just burn it give it a little dab don't burn that finger same thing on the bottom now notice let's talk about something else you can have this peep perfectly straight but as you tie this in and it compresses those twists against that peep so we're taking this this uh look at the, i'm gonna show you right here so you get like that much in focus, T-Bob. Come on up to the peep. Mm -hmm. All right. The natural twist of this string has the string closing all the way down here. When I tie it in, I'm compressing that bundle to about half of where it wants to close that. And as I do that and tie it in, that peep's going to rotate. The, thing, the good thing is it'll, it'll stay put unless my serving moves on its own, which it's not. So that's why I don't like when people put like two or three little knots in it and say it's good. The peep ain't going to fly out, but the, I about guarantee you it is going to move. All right. So if the serving on the peep moves, you can get rotation. Um, if the peep itself moves, you can get rotation. 
And then, of course, if somebody didn't like pre-stretch a string or build it worth a flip, you're going to get rotation. But I have seen people, you know, that only tie it around the peep and they put like two knots in it and they come back, you know, they, we ain't going to do that here, but they come back in there like my peep's moving and I can take two fingers and move their serving up and down. I'm like, well, that, that's the problem. They're like, well, that serving moving all around, that bundle, that where it's got the peep, the triangle there is moving all over the place. So anyway, hopefully that made some sense to somebody. Other people will email me and say hateful things like usual. Why do we even make these videos, DJ? I don't know. Another thing with the peep moving around, you'll get, might be sided in one second, next shot. Yeah. It could go high or low depending on which way that peep moves. That's a good point. The voice you just heard. Give me oh, that. Lord. It's TJ. How do y'all? If you call up here or come up here, you'll probably see TJ. Um, me and him handle the, most of our stuff, and then we got several other people coming in the evenings and help us, especially during the busy season. But, um, so we got the peep in. We're pretty much level. Let's do a quick center shot check. And then we're going to go to the draw board. I had somebody tell me, if you can't tune a bow without a draw board, you don't know how to tune a bow. I, we can tune a bow with or without a draw board. But when it comes down to being precise, let me tell you what I'm doing here. This is the redneck way to check center shot. You put an arrow against the riser and you check to see if it's parallel with the arrow in the rest. <clears throat> That's just a quick way. We got lasers and gauges and it's good to go. So let's take this bow to the draw board. I could pull this bow back and we could time it, but I can't pull it back in 30 second increments like I can on a draw board. That's what I was going to get to a minute ago. So I don't know. We're, we use one. I feel like it's the, the best way to set cam timing. And I can hold it at full draw or half off full draw or wherever I need to and check weight, check cam timing, all this stuff. I can check to see if this top cam is leaning one way or another. We're going to go do that now. So um, here we go. All right, we're over here at the draw board. This is the best way I've found to do it. We've got two different models. We've got a block and tackle hooked to a last chance archery digital scale. And we'll clip it on the loop. And then just for my own sanity, I got a safety rope that also goes and clips around just in case the D-ring on this last chance thing fails. I don't think it will, but I don't know. We're going to pull her back to full draw. So one thing I see that it's maxing at 60.5 pounds. That's a good sign because this is a 60 pound boat. That tells me that our string and cable links are super close. Okay. Now the first thing I'm going to check is I've got this spot hog laser here. Whoa. I'm going to take this thing and lay it flat against the top cam. And I'm looking at where it hits on the bottom limb. So I'm off to the left of the bottom limb, which tells me I need to put a little bit of twist in this pink side of this yoke up here. Okay. I'm going to go do that and I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. I put a twist in the pink side of the yoke. Now, exactly what I'm doing here is what I call yoke tuning. I want this top cam. I can I can adjust which way it points by twisting these two yoke legs. All right? I want it pointed 100% dead at that bottom cam. So I lay this laser flat on one side of the cam. Can't get it from that side. And then I lay it flat on the other side. Oh, where am I hitting at? I can't even tell. All right, so I'm hitting the axle on that side. When I flip to the opposite, I'm hitting middle limb. I need a half a twist more in this pink leg. So I'm going to go do that, and then I'll be back again. Okie dokie, we're back. 
This ought to put us pretty close, and then we're going to look at the cam timing itself. So I'm going to pull it back. I'll put this laser on it. I'll put my hand over here so I can see where I'm at. I still need a little bit of, I'm going to put another half a twist in it. We're getting close. While we got it back though, and you're still on here, I'm going to go ahead and look. I'm going to look at, th this stop is on our bus cable. I'm going to just turn that off. That thing's doing something. Oh, I don't know what I did, but it worked. <laughs> All right, so we're just off of it. Here's our top stop on our control cable, and we're hitting it. So I know in a minute, I'm going to have to adjust just a tiny bit to get those right, but I'm going to worry about my yoke first. <clears throat> we are back again. So let me tell you what I did. I put a twist in my one of my yoke legs, which should have also corrected the cam timing. So if the cam timing's way off, I put full twists in or out of the bus cable. One or two twists does a lot. But if it's super, super close, if you twist these yoke legs half a twist each, it's like a quarter twist in the entire cable. Does that make any sense anyway? So with us just putting a little bit of twist in that, yoke leg it probably also corrected our cam timing uh, not quite let's see where our thing is hitting here end of the limb on that side end of the limb on that side all right so our cam is perfect if you're at home you don't have a laser have draw your bow back now you can't torque it that's the big thing but you can look down the string and put it in the cam track and I can look down at the bottom cam and tell that it's this cam is pointing straight at that one so let's set our cam timing I think our camera may have cut off on that last clip so I don't know if that was in there or not we are mighty close let me check we're still good on our All right, so we're so close, I'm gonna go take a half a twist out of these yokes, and that should put us perfect. So I'll be back one more time. We're back again. We put a half a twist in our yoke legs. Oh man. Both of our stops are hitting at the same time. It's hard to show that on the video. I'm gonna check our, just because I twisted those, yeah, we're still on the edge. Just because I twisted those yokes, I want to make sure nothing changed. So as of right now, our cams are timed. Our cam is sitting straight. If we need to further yoke tune anything, if, if I get a weird tear and it won't clean up, I can twist these to put some cam lean in it and it'll sometimes it'll clear it up. We don't have to do that a whole lot. Um, so from now, we're going to go back to the vise and we're, then we're going to end up paper tuning it and then we're going to go outside and fire off a few arrows. Stick with us. We're back and we're going to paper tune this thing. So we got a Black Eagle Carnivore 350 spine, uh, 100 grain tip, and let's just, this is first shot out of it. Let's see what, what it does. Probably have to finagle with something a little bit. Okay. I still like these Hoyt bows, even the older ones. Oh, yeah. We got a little bit of a left tail kick. I'm gonna shoot it one more time to verify and then I'm gonna make a small adjustment. This is sort of my starting point. And then we may go do a walk back tune on camera because I don't think I've done that before on camera. Same thing. Let me grab an Allen wrench. I'm gonna move this thing over just a smidgen if I can get my wrench in there. All right. So um, tell them at home which way you're moving that rest off of that paper tear just to- I moved it towards the bow to the right. I mean, just 
the tiniest amount and the, we're kicking tail left. So let's see if that cleaned it up. Looks like it did. I'm gonna shoot it again, but that looks a lot better than the first time. So we had a tail left tear. I moved the rest to the right towards the bow. I'm gonna move over a little bit. I think we got it looking decent. I'm gonna shoot it one more time. I feel like there's a fletching that's kind of not glued down good it looks like and it's catching that paper. But I can tell it's not kicking like it was. So let's take this bow. Actually, let's shoot it to the chronograph while we're already in here. Then we're going to take it outside and I'm going to show you a walk back tune real quick. So take a guess. We got a little bit older Hoyt Vector 32, 60 and a half pounds, shooting a Black Eagle Carnivore, which is on the light side. I don't know exactly what it weighs, but it's a little bit lighter arrow. Let's see what it does. Two eighty-seven, not bad. Twenty-nine inch draw. I don't know if I said that, but um, our peep looks like it's doing good. So let's go outside and do a walk back tune. Okay, so we're going to do a walk back tune, and what that is is we're going to take a vertical line. You can hang a string, put a piece of tape, just make sure it's halfway level. I'm going to shoot it at like five yards. I'm going to get it hitting that side of the tape. And the way I'm going to move my sight to get it hitting that side of the tape, okay? Then I'm going to go to about 25 yards, and I'm going to adjust my rest from there. So if, I, if I'm hitting the tape at, at 5 yards, let's say I hit over here at 25. I'm going to adjust my rest to meet in the middle, and then I'm going to come back to 5 yards and readjust my sight, and I'm going to try it again. Some people mess up because they'll hit it go to 25 hit over here then they'll move their rest to hit it and they'll leave it alone but they don't realize they're still at 25 and they need to meet in the middle they'll if you come back to five it'll hit over here so we want it hitting this line virtually from zero to as far back as we can shoot you can actually do this inside and shoot it at say three yards and then back up you know 10 yards or eight yards or whatever and it'll do the same thing but the further back you can go the better so let's back up to five yards Okay, so I'm aiming at this side of the tape. I hit over here. I'm going to move my sight to the right and bring my arrow over here and shoot it again. All right, so we brought it over. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move my sight over just a hair more to where I'm hitting the, damn, the edge. If I can get this sight back loose. So I went a little too far. I'm gonna back it up to the left of here. Okay, so this is where I wanna be. I'm barely touching the white line with this arrow. I'm gonna back up to 25 yards and I want it to hit. I've only got this guy's one arrow, but I know where it hit. We're just barely touching the line. If I had multiple arrows, I'd just leave this one here. But I'm going to back up and I'm going to get it hit in the same spot at 25 and at 5 yards. Woohoo! So we got it hitting right on the tape at 25. Um, the first shot, I believe, was me. I've shot it a few more times and I'm consistently hitting. So we went down there. Uh, we're hitting the corner of the tape. So our process is to paper tune it first. That gets it super close. Then to do this walk back tune and that fine tunes the arrow rest. And then after that, usually broadheads and everything else fly great. So uh, maybe we'll do a video just on walk back tuning to go more in depth of it. But just wanted to show you the whole process. And uh, so this guy, when he gets here, 
we'll get him sighted in out here and then he'll be he'll be good to go and I'll, I'll verify that his tune matches mine but um you know 99% of the time we're good to go so we got this Hoyt Vector 32 tuned up um, got custom strings on it everything's tied back in uh, ready to go so if you need anything done give us a call at the Archery Shack 864-735-8484 you'll talk to me or TJ and we'll be happy to get you fixed up with arrows strings anything you need or just if you got questions give us a call um, we've been doing these videos for a couple months now getting a lot of calls uh, you know 50% of them just people needing to say hey I, I'm at home doing a paper tune what do I need to do to fix this and we don't mind it's getting a little busier uh, as far as the hunting season goes but we don't mind you know answering an email or a phone call or whatever and uh, if you want to send us your bow we'll be happy to tune it for you put a string on so just let us know what we can do for you if you like these videos give us a thumbs up if you don't tell us and we'll quit making them but uh, we're just trying to help some folks out and get our name out there. So we appreciate y'all watching and we will see you next time.